Okay, so in the last episode, or the last video, we read books of, we, we read books one through seven of, um, the books of, in the books of sorrow. So the last episode we left off with, I guess you could say we left off with Exiro plus Sathona plus Arash finding the Leviathan and then Leviathan. The Leviathan said these things. So now we're on book eight, Leviathan. Verse one of eight, Leviathan. The Leviathan's warning. He said, we live on the edge of a war. A war between formless and form. Between the deep and the sky. Okay, so um, basically, just FYI, so... This right here, this word deep, means enemies that are bad. And this right here, sky, means enemies that are good. So, like for instance, there may be words like the deep sea, meaning the deep sea meaning enemies that, you know, are evil. And then the sky, um, living in the above world, essentially. Anyways, I'll just repeat myself. The Leviathan's warning. We live on the edge of a war. A war between formless and form. Between the deep and the sky. My eyes are wide. My gaze is long. I guess the capital letters. Anyways, never mind. Across the universe... As far as I see, the sky works to charge its fires, and the deep drowns the ash. So the sky is doing one thing, and the deep is doing another thing. Basically just um, working the opposite. The good people are trying to survive, and the deep are trying to destroy the good. Anyways... Sky builds gentle places, safe for life. Beloved fundament, the planet, refuge of trillions. So, you know, fundament is the refuge of trillions of species and things like that. The sky treasures this rich place or fundament. But the deep is here with us. Logic tests our walls. The deep claims its dominion. A ruthless final age. Okay, now we're on to the Arash's protest. Old Leviathan, creature of myth, this world is no refuge. We live short, hard lives. We die in the dark. The storm above us will never end, and soon the God wave will take us all. Above us, there are only storm joys, monsters, and moons of apocalypse. Let us go down, down where we may discover truth, some power to avenge ourselves upon our betrayers or enemies, like the enemies who killed the Osmium king some hope of survival. So anyways, basically the Leviathan is saying these things like a warning and Arash is protesting because Arash still wants to go down, down where we may discover the truth, down into the deep. The Leviathan's hope. Um, basically, FYI, the Leviathan is just going to Try to save, um, no, Arash, you cannot go down into the deep. You should go up to the sky. But Arash is going to keep on protesting of going down. And I guess eventually the Leviathan will give in. But anyways, the Leviathan's hope. What power calls you down to the deep? What instinct draws you away from high hope or away from the sky? Quick, breeding, cruel people, I tell you. 
All right, and another thing, cruel people are referred to as the helium drinkers. So the helium drinkers are also cruel people. And I think Teox, um, originally Teox was the tutor of the three heirs. And Teox, I guess, was a cruel person as well, but people thought that Teox was a good person. But anyways, remember, Teox betrayed the people, or betrayed the Osmium King. What instinct draws you away from high hope? Quick braiding grown people, I tell you. For eons, I have watched your struggle, clinking to the sharp edge of survival, balanced between the deep and the sky. You were my treasure, my proof against despair. So, you, as an Arash and the people, were my treasure, because you were my proof against despair or destruction. For this is the deep call, for, for this is the deep claim. Existence is the struggle to exist. Existence is the struggle to exist. So in this world, if you want to exist, basically you're struggling to exist. When the struggle seems lost, when the safe place crumbles, Everything turns to the deep to survive. So when everything goes bad, it seems like everything turns to the deep or the depths to survive. But, you know, that's not a good thing to go into the deep or become evil. The Leviathan says, I reject the deep claim. You will turn back, sweet crow of hope. You will lose or you will choose this guy instead. So the Leviathan is basically saying to Arash to choose this guy, not to go deep. The Leviathan is saying to Arash to choose this guy instead. And then XI Rose protest, you are huge and old Leviathan. Our lives are short and desperate. So remember, um, the heirs, like Exiro, they can only live for a max of 10 years. So, Exiro said, you are huge and old, Leviathan. Our lives, Exiro, are short and desperate. If that is the way the world is supposed to be, I will not have it. If people like Teox are supposed to win, I will not let them. I will beat the world until it changes. I will kill anything in the way. The Leviathan dirge, or basically the Leviathan's response, this fatal logic, hear my mono people scream. It will consume you. Hear my mono people scream in the deep. Um, it will consume you if you go in there. Before you lies, the worship of death, the ruinous path, the sky builds new life against the onset of ruin or despair towards a gentle world as it going with the sky builds, correlates towards a gentle world. The deep embraces death, saying, this is inevitable and right. I exist as a hungry ruin. Turn your back from the world killing way, or you will live as death and devastation. The sky is the harder way, but is kinder. The sky may seem like a harder path, but the sky is kinder. My charge is balanced. My voice exhausted. As in the Leviathan's charge is balanced. And the Leviathan's voice is exhausted. And now we have Sathona protesting. Sisters, I have my father's familiar slash worm. 
look the worm answers me in plain words the worm helped me find this needle ship the worm gives me strength when hope is lost who will you trust will you trust the voice that that wants us to live and suffer, aka the Leviathan, as we have lived and suffered. The Leviathan that offers no hope against Teox or the world wave, the god wave. Or are you going to trust the plain, honest worm, the familiar? Let us see where the worm's whispers leads us. Let us go deeper, Exiro. Let us dive deeper. Oh, sisters mine. Okay, now we're on part nine. The bargain. Verse one of nine. The bargain. You are Arash, heir to the Osmium throne. You stand on the naked hull of an ancient ship. Does. Arash stands on the naked hull of an ancient ship. You slash Arash stand exposed to the crushing pressure and ferocious heat of the deeper fundament. These elements, the crushing pressure and ferocious heat, should annihilate you. It, but it is by my will alone, the worm's will that Arash is surviving these things. I am Yule, the honest worm. Okay, so the worm or all right, so this person right here was the Osmium King's familiar or the Osmium King's pet. This person the white worm is called Yule, the honest worm, which is one of the worm gods of the deep. Alright, anyways, behold my passage, behold my displacement, my ponderous strength, my great and coiling length, my folded jaws and curled wings. Behold the hiving cities, sim with my flesh. I am Fukund Arash. I have no idea what that word means, but the worm is saying I am Fukund Arash. Telling Arash that the worm is Fukund. I am at the beginning and end of lives. Behold, E I R and X O L and Ur and Akka. The virtuous worms. So I guess these people are also worm gods. So behold, E-I-R, and X-O-L, and Ur, and Akka, the virtuous worms, or the virtuous worm gods, look upon us, and know that we are, we are good worm gods. For millions of years, we, the worm gods, have been trapped such growing in the deep. From across the stars, we slush the worm gods, have called life to fundament, as in they were the ones who brought life to fundament, so that it might contend against extinction. For millennia, we slash the worm gods have awaited you, the heirs, etc., our beloved hosts, against you, or against the heirs stand the cruel Leviathan, and all the forces of the sky. These people would crush you down into the dark, 
so you can either progress into the deep. These people have arranged their moons to drown you in fear of your potential. We, the worm gods, like you, we, the worm gods, want to help you. Help the princes, the heirs, I guess. We offer to each of you a bargain, a symbiosis. So, the worm gods, or you, is offering a bargain to these heirs. Take into your bodies our children, our newborn lar larva. So take these into your bodies from the newborn larva, from the newborn larva. You shall obtain eternal life. From the newborn larva, you shall gain power over your own fragile flesh, the power to make of it as you will. And you should find an, and should you find an imperfection in the world, an injustice or an inconvenience, you will have the power to repair this imperfection. Let no mere law bind you. So basically, the worm gods are giving these people, the heirs, eternal life which is something that some of the heirs want. And by giving them eternal life, they will basically just be immortal and be extremely powerful. We have the... You will have the power to repair it. Let no mere law bind you. We ask but only one thing in exchange, O oh princes. Even if you get this eternal life stuff, you must obey your nature forever. You must not um, exploit things, basically, and become evil in the process. In your immortality, Arash, you may never cease to explore and acquire for the sake of your children, because Arash will become too powerful. In your immortality, Exiro, you may never cease to test your strength, because Exiro will become too powerful. In your immortality, Sathona, you may never abandon cunning, because Sathona will become too powerful. If you do, if you do betray your nature, your, if you do betray your original nature, your worm will subconsequently consume you. As your power grows, O oh princess, so will your worm's appetite. So if Exiro and these people um, exploit things because of their power, as a result, their worm's appetite will increase and they will be forced to become more evil, I guess. But we offer eternity, Arash. We offer you a chance at the universe. Would you deny your people infinity? Reach up to me. Let my flesh be your sacrament. Okay, now we're on part 10, Immortals. Verse 2 of Zero, Immortals. We are the worm, your God, the flesh of hope. Our compact is done. You are. Alright, so basically, now the heirs are mortal. Our compact is done. You are our rush eternal. And we are bound to you. As close as your appetites are bound to you. As your loves or needs. As the weapon in your fists and the word in your throat, we are bound to you that closely. We have had enough of this dismal place. Haven't you have en had enough of this dismal place? We are in top. We are in tackling. We are in tackling your needle ship with larva. Basically, just making the needle ship more powerful. Go back to your species. 
spread the good news in the osmium court and the hydrogen fountain and the bone plaza and the star surgery. These are all places you will rise up into the world. If anyone rejects symbiosis with our children, make an example of them. A mighty wave is coming for these people are rejecting for them. A mighty wave is coming for them all. They would die anyway, save only what can be saved. The worm grants you power over your own flesh, Arash. When you have taken the king of morph, basically some type of substance, what will your adult name be? And Arash, after taking the king of morph, her new name will be Rx or A-U-R-Y-X. It means long thought. We approve, as in the worms approve of this. So the worms are, they're not really, the worm gods are not really bad or anything like that. But they're just, the worms are just foretelling on the heirs about that great power equals great responsibility. Anyways, part 11, Conquerors. Verse 2 of 1, Conquerors. Savathun, mother morph of Sathona. We delight in your sharp mind. So Savathun became, I mean, Sathona became Savathun. For millions of years, the Leviathan caged us here. For millions of years, the Leviathan trapped us here. The Leviathan is a pawn of the sky. The Leviathan is a philosophy of cosmic slavery. The sky needs civilizations pre predicated, or the sky seeds civilizations predicated on a terrible lie that right actions can prevent suffering. The lie is that right actions can prevent suffering, that pockets of artificial rules can defy the final beautiful logic. This is like trying to burn water, antithetical to the nature of reality or opposite to the nature of reality, where, dep where deprivation and competition are universal. In the deep, we enslave nothing. Liberation is our passion. We exist to help the universe achieve its terminal self-forging glory. Anyways, the war rages on. Soon it will consume the fundament. We are pleased with your use of our larva to create mighty knights and plentiful warriors. Teox's retreat to the hydrogen fountain proves your superior strength. So, you know, they're winning against Teox's forces, but you must know that Reclaiming your home is not enough. There are 511 species living on Fundament. One of them, or one of the species, must have technology you need to leave this world. Basically, the, um... Alright, so basically, I guess you could say that... Teox, I mean... The heirs used their powers to defeat Teox for them to retreat. But now their powers are saying that you need to do more. Anyways, part 12, Out of the Deep. Verse 2 of 2, Out of the Deep. Sivu Arath, Night Morph of Exiro. So Exiro became Sivu Arath. You will have to conquer. Do you 
not. We love to see you work. Nearly 2% of Fundament's service is now our dominion. Your species embraces the worm. The syzygy has passed. The god wave will reach you in less than two years. Our organs or our assets or something like that informs us that Teox and our surviving refusalists flee towards Cayenne Atoll. Teox hopes to rally the species of fundament against you slash the heirs. The Leviathan's agents work tirelessly to destroy ships and engines, trapping us on fundament. If we cannot make ships, he will become them. This is basically like an analogy. If we cannot make ships or pro progress, if we cannot make ships or progress, you will become them or you will become stuck or something like that. Anyways, overwhelm the Cairn Bastion. Slaughter everyone there at Cairn. From your axe, we shall obtain the logic we require to cut space open and migrate to orbit. Reality is a fine flesh oach, oach and roll ours. Let us feast of it. Alright, so anyways. Okay, so remember the worm. The worm god gave them eternal life and great power. So, anyways, let me just explain this to you um, more clearly. So, originally, the worm gods were held captive in the deep. I guess you could say that they were being held captive because of their power. But now, from the acts of these heirs, we shall obtain the logic we require to cut space open and finally migrate to orbit or escape this world fundament. Part 13, Into the Sky. Verse 2 of 3, Into the Sky. You have done well. Um, Rx. This, remember, this person was originally Rx, or this person was originally Rash. But because of the power, this person changed her name to A-U-R-Y-X. It kind of sounds like, um, anyways, never mind. So you have done well, Rx. Can you feel the growth of your worm? Can you feel your will beginning to warp? Mere law. At times, we detect sadness in you. At times, we detect sadness in you slash arcs. Understand, understand this, long thinker, that you enact a sacred and majestic task. Existence is the struggle to exist. Only by playing that game to its final unconditional victory can we complete the universe. Your war is divine work. We are free from fundament score. So remember, the worms were the worm gods were originally trapped in fundament. But because of the heir's actions, the worms are finally free from fundament's core. And Savathun's gutters are ready to fly. I guess that's Savathun's minions. Remember, Sathona became Savathun. I'll just repeat myself. Arash became Arks. Sathona became Savathun. We are free. The worms are free from Fundament's core. And Savathun's cutters are ready to fly. With 
Sifu are the wrath victorious. We we have opened a wound at Kahar. A wound leading to geostationary orbit. Behold, we are faithful to our covenant. Alright, so remember. God, I'll just repeat this one last time before I keep on repeating myself. Our ash became arcs because of the worms. Sothona became Savathun because of the worms. And Xiro became Sifu Arath because of the worms. And the worms, because, and because of the, um, because of the air's actions, the worms have escaped fundament. And this is the worm's response. Behold, we are faithful to our covenant, or the worms are faithful to what the worm's original intentions were. We have no future on fundament, but fundament's moons will make fine habitats. Let us rise. Okay, now I'm going to end this episode here, because it's been longer than 30 minutes. Okay, so, alright, so, um, I just wanted to make a quick little note about something that it's important, I guess. So here it is. Um, I'm going to be reading this part for the next video, but it is right here. Okay, so, in this part, when the Leviathan was speaking, he was mentioning two terms, the deep and the sky. Okay, so basically, you could equate the deep to the term hell and the sky to the term heaven. Um, more specifically, the deep are enemies of the sky and the sky are enemies of the deep. So it's like, kind of like the forces between heaven and, he and hell. Personnel of hell are trying to take down the personnel of heaven. And personnel of heaven are, you know, trying to take down the personnel of hell. So, the deep are the enemies of the sky. Essentially. And basically, I guess you could say, personnel of the deep have their own philosophy. And which personnel of the deep think that the deep is the right way. Whereas personnel of the sky thinks that the sky is the right way. Anyways, um, I, I just wanted to add that in there because, well, I have read some certain things in the past. Um, this is not related to destiny, in which there are some people that will believe that in the aspect of heaven and hell, that supporters of the people of hell are or the god of hell like basically the like the god satan is the good god and the god of non-hell is the bad god anyways i've read things like that before that's not related to destiny and basically they're just trying to Make an analogy, I guess. I don't know. Anyways, that's it.